Welcome to 321 exam. Today I shall be your physics teacher and um, we shall be looking at the topic liquid at rest. Now you all know what a liquid is and uh, we also know that a liquid is one of the states of matter and it has molecules too, right? So, under this liquid address, we shall be considering a very important topic that is called the density and uptrust. Now, the first thing is to talk about density. What is density? I remember when I was taking you on fundamental and derived quantities, we measured this particular word, density, as one of the derived quantities, right? So we want to study density in details today and see how it is applicable to the states of matter. The first thing we should ask ourselves before we go into the topic proper is what is density? Now by definition, density is the ratio of mass to volume of an object. So the ratio of mass to the volume of an object is called the density of that object. And mathematically, we can say density, which is represented as rho, is equals to what? Mass over volume. Also, you should understand that the mass is measured in kilogram while the volume is measured in meter cube so that the unit of density is kilogram per meter cube. So that's the unit of density. I remember that it's the ratio of mass to the volume of a body. And also, I need you to understand that density is a scalar quantity because it has only magnitude but without direction. Now, the first thing we want to consider here is the density of a solid. How do you calculate the density of a solid aside the usage of this formula? Take, for instance, if we have a solid, how do we get the density? Now, before we go over to that, I would like you to understand that there are two categories of solid we'll be talking about here. The first category is the regular solid. Now, regular solids are solids with specific dimensions. They have length, breadth, thickness, or they are made up of three dimensions, and that is why they are three-dimensional shape. Recall that a three-dimensional shape is a shape that you can hold or feel, while a 2D shape or a two-dimensional shape, they are a shape that you can only draw. They have two dimensions, right? You can't hold a two-dimensional shape or you can hold a three-dimensional shape. So we want to consider the density of a regular solid. Now, the first thing you need to do is that you get the mass of the shape. Remember, the density is the ratio of mass to volume. And how do you measure mass? Mass can be measured using a weighing balance. Remember, when we discussed measurement in the first topic, we talked about how to measure mass using a beam balance, a lever balance or a chemical balance that obeys the principle of moment. So on this note, since density is mass over volume, we measure our mass using the weighing balance. And after measuring our mass, they will get our volume. Remember that the volume of a solid depends on the shape, right? If your solid is a cuboid in shape, then the volume will be length times breadth times height. If your solid shape is a cube, the volume will be L raised to the power of 3. If it is a cylinder, the volume will be pi r square h, where r is your radius. If it is a cone, the volume is 1 over 3 pi r square h. If it is a sphere, just like the shape of the earth, the volume will be 4 over 3 pi r cube. If it is a hemisphere, 
which is half a sphere, the volume will be three, 2 over 3 pi half cube. So depending on the shape of the solid, your volume can be um, calculated. And then you can get your density by taking the value of the mass divided by the value of the volume you obtain. Right? Now the next shape we want to consider here is the irregular shape. Irregular shape solid. Right? In an irregular solid, we don't have a specific dimension. It is just um, a shape that is not regular, right? And for that reason, the mass also can be obtained using your weighing balance, right? But the volume of this irregular surely can be obtained by a very important method. And that method involves you immerse the solid or the solid in water or in a liquid. Let's assume this is a liquid or this is water. All you need to do is to drop the solid in the water. Now let's assume this is the initial level of the water before the solid was dropped. If you drop the solid of this mass in the water, the water level rises, right? Now the volume is dependent on the difference in the water level. And that gives you volume in centimeter cube, depending on which of the um, instruments used. If you are using a measuring cylinder, it also depends on the calibration. Is that clear? So the volume can be obtained by this. And using the formula mass over volume, you can obtain the density of the irregular solid. Then coming to liquid, You can measure the volume of a liquid using a measuring cylinder, a pipette, a burette, and so on. Remember, we talked about that in the first topic. But the mass of a liquid can be obtained as follows. The first thing is you weigh an empty container or empty, um, should I call it measuring cylinder, You note the mass, right? Then after pouring the liquid in the measuring cylinder, you take the mass again. And the difference between the mass when empty and when the liquid is poured gives you the mass of the liquid. Then to get your density, you use mass over volume. And also there is a special instrument for measuring the density of a solid, and that is the hydrometer. Is that understood? Then we'll go to the relative density. The relative density is defined as the density of substance because the symbol for density is rho. That is the Greek word, right? So the density of substance over the density of water, right? The density of substance is kilogram per meter cube over the density of water is kilogram per meter cube. Are you there? When this cancel this, you now realize that the relative density has no units as it is only a ratio. Now, in the course of this, we are going to be calculating the relative density of a solid and also the relative density of a liquid. And after calculating the relative density, then we'll go to one very important principle that is called the Archimedes principle. Now, the first thing is the relative density of a solid. The formula for the relative density of a solid is mass in air. Right? What I mean by mass in air is the weight of the solid in air. Right? Over mass in air minus mass in water. This is still the same thing as the weight in air over weight in air minus weight in water. Right? Now, this weight in air minus weight in water is also called the uptrust. in water. 
Now, let me give you an instant or insight rather into what is called the uptrust. Now, for those of you that are used to fetching water from the well, you discover that when your bucket is inside the well, it appears lighter than when it is out of the well, right? And it appears lighter because there is an upward force which tends to support the tension and that upward um, force, rather, is what is called the uptrust, right? Therefore, the uptrust is the change in weight. That is the formula for calculating the uptrust. And when we get to Archimedes' principle, I will emphasize more on this subject matter called the uptrust, right? So I want you to understand that the relative density of a solid is given as the weight of the solid in air, that is the real weight, over the weight in air minus weight in water, which is the uptrust in water. Then the next thing we want to consider after this is the relative density of a liquid. We might have a liquid and want to calculate the relative density of that liquid. And the relative density is uptrust in liquid over uptrust in water. Now, what is uptrust in liquid? It's still the same thing as weight in air minus weight in liquid. And what is uptrust in water? That is weight in air minus weight in water. So this is the formula for calculating the relative density of a liquid. And relative density, remember what I said, that it has no unit and it can be measured using an instrument called the relative density bottle or the density bottle. Are you there? That is what you can use for measuring this. Now with this, I think we have come to the end of the explanation of relative density. The next thing we want to consider now is what is called the Archimedes principle. This principle was stated by a physicist that is called Archimedes. And the question on this came out jump 1980. You go search for that as soon as we prove um, the various formulas using this principle. Now the question is, what does Archimedes principle state? It states that when the body When a body is partially or totally immersed in a fluid, in this instance, we talk about liquid because when we talk about fluid, it can be a gas too. Fluid means liquid or gases, right? So when a body is partially or totally immersed in a fluid, the uptrust, I told you right from time that the uptrust is the upward force, is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. Right? That is when the body is partially or totally immersed in a fluid, the uptrust on it is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. Now, let's assume we have this is your well, or this is the bucket of water. Let me use the bucket of water here, right? Then we have these filled to this brim. Then we have the bucket you're using to fetch the water. Let's assume it's from a very deep well right and this is the um, rope linking the bucket to you here this is you here fetching water right now i realize that there are two forces acting on this bucket a force is acting downward which is your weight or the weight of the bucket that's mg and there is a reaction right acting upward and that reaction is what is called the uptrust right now, the tension is going this way, and for that reason, the tension plus the uptrust will give you what? Weight. That is, the sum of the upward forces will give you the sum of the downward forces, right? 